assalamu alaikum friends my name is bilal khan and this is my 11th video of devops so this video will be starting from vlcm or variable length subnet mask so before discussing the vlcm let's close this slide show and move to the ietf internet engineering task force so basically in the previous video i have shown you that the ip address will be divided on based on classes so in the ietf will assign the IP address based on the regions. Alright, so it will assign the IP address to the ISPs based on the regions, not based on the classes. So this is the main uh, definition of the IETF. So here is a website, ietf.org. You can see more details about it if you want. So let's move to the slideshow again. And now let's discuss what is VLCM. So in the previous video, I have shown you what is subnetting. So it is a little bit different that, uh, than subnetting. So we will uh, discuss what this VLCM by explaining it. So here is a network that has two routers connected with it. Here are the IP addresses, all right, 30, 20, 10, 4, and 2. All right, so these are different kinds of IP addresses. So we will start from this 30 because it is bigger than uh, other IP addresses. So let's take the class C IP address. The class C IP address is 197.10.10.0. Alright, so the first step would be 197.10.10.80. So basically these are the binary numbers of the uh, IP, uh, each of the numbers that the IP address contains. So this will also contain the 8 binary numbers. This will also contain the 8 binary numbers. This will also contain the 8 binary numbers. And similarly, this, these zeros will also be, uh, will be in the form of 8 binary numbers. Alright? So the subnet mask of this IP address would be, of the class C IP address would be 255.255.255.0. Alright? So now let's move to the second step and do some mathematical calculation by taking this IP address and uh, after uh, we will find it that if the 30 is greater than or equal to the result all right so we will take this uh, result so what is the formula of it 2 raised to the power of n minus 2 if this number is equal to or greater than 30 then we will take this number so 2 raised to the power of 1 minus 2 is equal to 0 2 raised to the power of 1 minus 2 is equal to 2. This is not equal to 30 or greater than 30. So let's move on to the 2 raised to the power of 3 minus 2 is equal to 8 minus 2 is equal to 60. 2 raised to the power of 5, uh, 4 minus 2 is equal to 16 minus 2 is equal to 14. So this is not greater than 30 or equal to 30. So now let's move to the 2 raised to the power of minus 5. Uh, minus uh, 2 raised to the power 5 minus 2 is equal to 32 minus 2 is equal to 30. So it is equal to this 30. All right. So now the n value would be 5 because with the help of this 5 we have found the 30. So the n number is equal to 5. Now we will use this 5 in the IP address. So the, the IP address from the right side we will take the 5 numbers of the binary numbers. So uh, I have shown you that at every number of the IP address will be containing 8 binary numbers. So the 5 value will take the 5 binary numbers from the right side of the IP address. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So these are the 5 numbers that is equal to 5. So these 5 numbers will be taken as host bit. And after that all the numbers will be taken as network bit. Alright, so the network bit has value 1 and these host bit has value 1. Alright, so now let's take, uh, take the network bit numbers, uh, decimal numbers, or the decimal number of these network uh, um, of these network bits. So the first bear, uh, first network bit will be having 128 decimal number. After that, the second network bit will be having 64 bit number. After that, the third uh, decimal number, uh, third binary numbers would be having 32 decimal numbers. Alright, so this will be added together to form 224. So now the decimal value of this IP address would be 197.10.10.224. Now let's move to the step 4 and this is the subnet 1. 
so we will uh, calculate the subnet 1 in the step 4 after that in the subnet id would be 197.10.10.0 slash 27 so where this 27 came from so basically uh, here is the uh, IP address and each of the I, uh, numbers will be having the binary numbers 8 of this number this is the binary number 8 is the binary number of this number after that 8 is the binary number of this number 8 8 8 8 24 25 26 27 so these are the uh, binary numbers that are present in the whole, uh, network bit and these are the binary numbers that are present in the host bit but we will not take this host bit numbers all right so after that that these are the 27 and this is basically called CIDR we will discuss what is CIDR so now let's move to the subnet broadcast ID so the subnet broadcast ID would be 197.10.10.31 so where does this uh, 31 came from so basically the last uh, the first uh, number of the network bit will be uh, will be taken so the from the right side the first number of the network bit is 1 all right so this one has a decimal value 32 so the 32 value will be taken and the 31 value 32 value will be taken and from uh, 1 will be subtracted from 32 and that 32 uh, will now become 31 and this is the broadcast id Right. So these are the CIDR 27 and 27. These are the CIDR classless internet domain routing. These these will basically tell that the how many network bits are present in the IP address. So the 27 network bits are present in the IP address. So now let's move to the subnet two. After the subnet ID would be 197.10.10.32. All right and uh, after that let's apply the ma mathematical calculation now this time we will take the 20 ip address all right so let's move to the previous slide we have taken the 30 we have done some mathematical cal cal calculation of the 30 now let's take the uh, 20 after the 10 after the 4 and then 2 all right so now we are going to take the 20 ip address do some mathematical calculation and the result would be uh, 2 raised to the power of 5 minus 2 is equal to 30, 2 minus 2 is equal to 30. So in the 2 raised to the power of 4, the result was 14. So if the 14 is not equal to or greater than 20, so we will accept this 30 because it is greater than 20. Alright? So now let the n number would be 5. Alright? So after that, uh, let's use this 5 in the IP address. The, uh, from the right side of the IP address, the numbers will be counted. So five numbers will be counted: one, two, three, four, five. All right. So after that, let's uh, take, uh, take this, uh, these numbers uh, and give it to the host uh, bit. And after that, all the numbers that are remained will be given to the network bit. All right. Similarly, the, uh, each of the network uh, decimal numbers of the ne network bit will be counted. 128 64 plus 32 these are belonging one will be having the first one will be having 128 decimal numbers the second one will be 64 the third will be 32 and these will be added together to, to form 224 now let's add this 24 to the IP address to form decimal numbers and after that subnet ID would be in the previous uh, subnet one we have seen that if the subnet ID was uh, 197.10.10.0 but in this time the subnet ID would be 32 all right because 32 was added so after that 197.10.10.32 slash 27 the 27 is again used because uh, the binary numbers of this IP address of the network bit would be 8 8 8 24 26 uh, 25 26 27 all right so after that the broadcast ID would be 197.10.10.63 so where this 63 uh, is used so basically this is the 32 numbers where the, from the right side of the IP address the first network bit that is starting the decimal value of this first number will be taken alright from the right side of the IP address the first number 
that is starting of the network bit, this decimal value will be taken and the decimal value of this is 32. So 32 plus 32 is 64. But broadcast ID would subtract 1 from 64. So it will be a 63. Alright, 187.10.10.63-27. After that, the subnet mask would be 255.255.255.224. So now let's move to the subnet 3. So the subnet 3 is uh, has a subnet ID 197.10.10.64. This time it is giving me the 64. After that, here is some mathematical calculation. So now we are taking the uh, IP address 10. Now the result would be 2 raised to the power of 4 minus 2 uh, is equal to 16 minus 2 is equal to 40. Alright, so in this, time, uh, in this time the uh, value of 4 n will be 4. Alright, so now let's apply the uh, mathematical, uh, this n to the IP address. From the right side let's uh, count the numbers 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Alright, and the remaining 4 numbers will be in the network bits. All the remaining numbers from this one will be starting from the end, from, uh, from this uh, to this at the end will be counted as network bits, but these numbers, four numbers uh, will be counted as host bits. Alright, so now let's uh, take the decimal value of these four numbers these that are present in the network bits. 128 after the 64, uh, 32 plus 16. Now the 16 is added. So this, this will be resulted in 240. Now let's use this uh, 240 in the 187.10.10.240. This will be the decimal numbers of this IP address. So after that, the subnet ID would be 187.10.10.64 slash 28. So now in the previous slide, we have seen that the uh, CIDR was 27, but this time it is becoming the 27, 28. What, how? So here is the uh, binary numbers. 888 8, 8. so it is giving us the 24 24 plus 4 it will become 28 all right so after that uh, the broadcast id would be 197.10.10.79 because the um, 79 it is basically giving us the uh, number of 80 so we will subtract one from it to become uh, to the uh, to give the 79 to the broadcast ID. So how the 80 will become? So basically, from the right side uh, of the IP address, the first network bit has a decimal number 16. So the 16 will be added to the 64. All right. So if the 16 is added to the 64, it will be equal to 80. All right. So this 80 from one, this 80 one will be subtracted to form the broadcast ID. All right. So subnet mask would be. 255.255.255.40. Now let's move to the subnet 4 and the subnet ID, the new subnet ID will be uh, 197.10.10.80. Alright, because we sub added 64, uh, 16 with 64. Alright. So after that, the mathematical calculation is applied with the help of this formula and now the bro uh, n number is equal to 3. Alright. So after that, uh, let's apply this 3 uh, into this IP address, 1, 2, 3, and all the numbers that are, uh, that are, uh, all the numbers that are present here will be used as a network bit. And these three numbers will be used as the host bit. So let's uh, um, calculate the decimal numbers of each of the ones, 128, 64, 32, 16. Now it is giving us the 8 because this has a um, decimal number 8. So it is giving us a 248 result. Let's apply this into the IP address 187.10.10.224. Right? 2, uh, 248, sorry. After that, the subnet ID would be 197.10.10.80 slash 29. Alright? Because 8, 8, 8, uh, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Alright? So these are the uh, decimal numbers, uh, binary numbers that are counted and it became 29. So after that, uh, let's apply this 8 because the, from the right side of the IP address, the first network bit that has a decimal value 8 will be added to this 8, 80. Alright? 
So the 8 will be added to this 80. So it will become 87. Uh, so it will become 88, but the broadcast ID will subtract 1 from it to uh, to become it, uh, to set it 87. Alright? 187.10.10.10.87 dot dot ten dot ten dot will be used instead of 88. Alright? So slash 29. So the subnet mask would be 255.255.255.248. Now the subnet 5 is going to be uh, 197.10.10.88. In the previous uh, subnet, five, uh, subnet 4 we have seen that we have reached to the IP address 4. Now we are uh, going to the last IP address that is 2. All right, that, uh, that we have seen in the previous slide that the last IP address we, we started from 30, then 20, then 10, then 4, and now it is the final IP address that is 2. So let's apply the mathematical calculation to it. After that, the n number is equal to 2. All right, and now let's apply this to 1, 2. So these are the n numbers, and all the remaining numbers are uh, network bits. Apply the mathematic. Uh, apply. Uh, add the decimal numbers of each of the uh, ones. 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, and now it is becoming 4. So the 4 is going to be the this one decimal numbers. All right. So this 4 is belonging to this last uh, uh, one because it, uh, this one has a decimal number of 4. So now it is giving me the result of 252. After that. The uh, 197.10.10.52 will be used as the decimal value of this IP address, and the subnet mask will be 192 .10 .10 .88. All right, this is the 88, and now 4 will be added because the last, uh, the first number of the network bit that has a value, decimal value of 4 will be added to this 88. The last number, uh, sorry, the first number of the network bit that has a net uh, decimal value 4 will be added to the 88. So this will give the result 92 but 1 will be subtracted to form the broadcast ID. Alright? And this is the 30 because the now the uh, CIDR value is 30 because 8, 8, 8, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Alright? So these are the binary numbers that are calculated. After that, the subnet mask would be 255.255.255.252. So there are three numbers that are remaining from 252, uh, 253, 254, 255. Alright? So the three numbers that are uh, remaining will be uh, will fulfill uh, through this will be fulfilled through this number uh, criteria. So basically, the four that is used here now the next zero will be having uh, uh, the decimal uh, number two. And after that, this last zero will be having the decimal number one. So two plus one will be having will be plus uh, will be added together three. All right. So if this three is added to this uh, mm, subnet mask, so in the IP to the IP address, that will become the 255. So these two are uh, the host bits that are not used in this IP address in this subnet mask. So it will uh, give us the result 252. So we will not move to the further uh, IP addresses, to the further subnets, because the network is closed here. All right. So because the network was starting from 30, now it's ended at 2. So we will ignore these host bits. So now let's move to the reserved addresses. So these are some of the addresses that are uh, reserved and you cannot use it. So the 127.0.0.0 and these are the uh, numbers, zeros are the numbers that you can modify. But the 8, uh, the slash 8 is the reserved number, a reserved address that you cannot modify. So these are the reserved addresses that are used in somewhere else, so you cannot use it. The example of it, localhost um, uh, 127.0.0.1. So if you are familiar with local, um, with the web development, you know that where is the local host used. So basically it is used in the browser to show us the result of the web page. So these are the loop back addresses. Right? So these, uh, the device will work as a client and a server also. 
If you send a request, it will respond back to you with the help of this IP address. So at the same time, it will uh, work as a client and a server also. So it will always be up until the computer is down. All right. So it is going to be giving the it is going to give the result until the computer is down. All right. So now let's move to the packets. Apart from the data, the header is of two by, uh, 20 bytes. All right. So the packet uh, size will be at uh, the header size of packets will be having 20 bytes of size. So these packets will contain the IPVs, uh, length, identification number, flag, protocols, checksums, address, TTL. Uh, time to leave that all all the things that we have discussed in the previous videos so you can check the previous videos all right so now let's move to the IPv6 address all right so the IPv6 address we have seen in the previous video also that IPv4 is containing the 32 bits of the IP address or the 32 bit size and the IPv6 uh, contains the 128 bits of size so basically if you calculate this, 2 raised to the power of 32 will give us 4.3 billion IP addresses. All right. So these are the IP addresses that are used in the world. All right. So the uh, 4.3 billion IP addresses are used in the IPv4. And uh, as the internet, uh, in, as the number of internet users increased and the devices are increased, so there was a, real, a realization that the IPv4 will not fulfill the criteria of uh, the more IP addresses. It will not contain more IP addresses because the number of devices are increasing. So as a result, the IPv6 was introduced. And it, this IPv6 is four times bigger than IPv4. All right? So 2 raised to the power of 4 multiplied by 32, this will become 2 raised to the power of 128 and the result would be uh, more than billion. So you can, uh, you can, the IPv6 will contain more than billion IP addresses. So this is uh, 3.4 3 into 10 raised to the power of 38. So these are the IP addresses that IPv6 contains. All right, but here are, but here are some cons attached to it. So let's uh, uh, see the, what are these cons. So the devices that are configured with IPv4 cannot access the devices that are configured with IPv6. All right, this is the first con. So the ISPs would have to shift because currently the ISPs are using the IPv4. So all the IP, ISPs in the world will have to shift to the IPv6. And there are a lot of hard work required, hardware work required, all right? So now let's move to the I, how the IPv6 is represented. So basically it contains eight hexadecimal numbers and each number is a 16 bit of size. All right. So these are the um, eight bit, uh, eight hexadecimal numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. And each of the number will be having 16 bit of size. So these are the IPv prefix. So let's say that this is the IP address. In the, pre, uh, in the previous slide, I have shown you about the CIDR. So this, uh, the IPv6 is also using the CIDR or the prefix. All right. So let's take an example. This here is the IP address with the CIDR. And after that, let's take this uh, number and this number, and all the zeros that are present here will be counted as one zero. All right. These four zeros will be counted as one. This four zero will be counted as one. All right, so all the four zeros will be counted as one. Now at the end, there are three zeros and one is uh, attached to it. So these three zeros will be ignored and one will be taken. All right, so this will be used here. After that, the this number will be uh, um, taken as it is. This number will be taken as it is. And now all the zeros will be uh, will be ignored and instead two columns will be used and after that one number will be used and this two column will represent all the uh, all the zeros all right so here is the uh, let's move uh, to another slide and show you that all the zeros will be used as one zero all right and uh, here is the ip address that is starting from one and it is ending at nine so all the zeros that are between will be counted as one zero. 
So this is for, these are the four zeros that will be counted as one zero. After that, these are all the zeros that are represent that were represented as four zeros. So after that, uh, two columns will be in between, and these four zeros will be replaced with two columns. And this this will show that this two column will show that this is full of zeros, right? So now let's move to the middle boxes. So the middle boxes as it is showing by its name that they are present in the middle. So they are the extra devices that interact with the IP packets and allow them or stop them in between. So basically these are the devices that are present in between the host and the router and they will interact with the packets and it will, they will allow them to or stop them or reject them in between. So it will allow or stop them the packets packets to be allowed or rejected in between. It will allow that whether this packet should be transferred or not. So it will be with the help of the middle boxes. So they are present mostly in the network layer and uh, present also in the uh, transport layer. Alright. So in the first middle box is the firewall. Right. So the firewall has uh, is connected with global internet is in between global internet also and the firewall is also connect, uh, present in the trusted in your trusted network that you are using in your home or office so the firewall will be used all right so the firewall filter out ip packets based on various rules all right so it will filter out the ip packets to be transferred or not so based on the various uh, various rules so the first rule would be ip address so let's say uh, a certain IP address wants to access the uh, another device, so it will check the firewall will allow them or reject the IP address based on its address. So it will allow the specific address that you are not allowed to uh, to be transferred to the device. All right. So it will also filter out the uh, IP packets based on the packets based on the packets. It will modify the packets. So let's say the IP uh, and the packets want to be uh, want to send to the uh, device A, but it will modify the packet to be transferred to the device B. All right, so it will modify and change its destination. The port numbers will also be uh, used. So the port numbers, how it will use in the previous video, I have shown you that the port numbers are used to identify the application. So it will transfer the, uh, uh, it will change the port numbers to be transferred to another application instead of the first one. All right. The flags are also used. So the flags will show the condition of the packets that are received. So it will, let's say the, uh, there is a synchronization flag that will show that the uh, client and the server are connected. So if the firewall delete all the flags then it will not show us that either the client is connected with the server or not. All right. The protocols, the set of rules that it can change the set of rules if they are if some uh, one device is connect, uh, communicating with another. So it will change the rules of it. So now the firewall has two types: stateless firewall and the stateful firewall. So in the stateless firewall, the it won't maintain the states of the packets. All right. So in the stateful firewall, it will see the packets and store its state by storing it in the cache memory. So it will store its state by saving it in the cache memory, but the stateless firewall will, will not uh, store the state of the packets. Right? So now let's move to the um, another type of the um, middle box. This was the first one. So let's close this. Now here you can see that here is the uh, NAT, Network Address uh, Transfer or Transmission. You can see it, you can Google it online. So here is the uh, NAT that is also the middle box. So basically what is the functionality of the NAT? Basically, it will, uh, here is the host, all right? You can, uh, it has a IP address 10.10.0.0.1, uh, all right? This is the IP address of this host. So it is transferring the data in a private network to the server. So what will the NAT do in between? So the NAT will take this IP address of the host and uh, convert it into this IP address. All right. So it will take this IP address and convert it into this one. So in this way, 
if the internet uh, is received this uh, this data so it will identify this host with this IP address all right because the uh, data is not transferred through the internet now it is in between the uh, uh, host and the router but the net has allocated another IP address to the host so if the, inter uh, the uh, data is passed through the internet the internet will identify the data of this host with this IP address because the IP address of the host is not provided all right? and with the help of this IP address the data will be transferred to the server all right? so this is the functionality of the net you can check it further online so now let's move to the slide and uh, move to another layer now we have discussed the um, network layer now let's move to the data link layer so the data packets that you receive from the network layer correct so the data packets that you receive from the network layer will be transferred to the physical layer correct so they will be transferred to the physical layer and after that the physical layer will um, uh, will transfer it to another device so the, uh, in between the data link layer will be used so the data will be transferred from the, uh, from the uh, to the network uh, from the network layer to the physical layer with the help of data, data link layer so the data will pass through the data link layer all right so after that here uh, you can see that here is a router and uh, the ip address is uh, allocated to this router from the isp and uh, here are some of the devices that are uh, connected with this router and here the subnet mask will be used basically to allocate the IP address to the uh, devices that are connected to the router so in this way the DHCP will be used dynamic host configuration protocol alright so we have discussed in the previous videos also that the dynamic host configuration protocol will assign the local IP addresses to these devices alright so let's say here is a new device that wants to connect to this router so it will contact the DHCP server all right so the DHCP server will look into its uh, um, server that it contains a lot of IP addresses so the server contains the DHCP contains a lot of IP addresses like A, B, C, D, E, F and so on so it will assign one IP addresses to the new device all right so it will assign one IP address to the new device that is connected to the router so all right so now that each device will be having an IP address and the data link address all right so every device that is connected to the router will be having an IP address and the data link address also all right so that with the help of this data link address the data can be transferred from the network layer to the physical layer so now the data link layer has two sub layers logical link control LLC it deals with protocol set of rules flow control how the data will how the data will flow and the error control how if the errors uh, occurs in between so how it will deal with this error all right media access control a MAC address you can uh, if you know that it controls the device interaction it will uh, control that how the device will interact with another device so the MAC address will deal with this problem so the data link layer takes packets from the network layer all right and encapsulates them into frames all right so in the previous video I have shown you that the data uh, will be transferred in packets in segments due to uh, a different layer but in data link layer the data will be transferred in frames and the packets that is sent from the network layer will be encapsulated and the data link layer will encapsulate them into frames all right so here is the ARP address resolution protocol so ARP is used to get the MAC address from the destination by giving its IP address so the destination IP address will be provided to the device and as a result of this IP address the MAC address will be assigned to the ARP all right so the ARP will send the request to the destination all right and the request will be transferred to the through all the devices ignore all of them all of the devices in between and it will only be received at the destination IP address to take the MAC address from it all right so all the devices that will come in between will be ignored and only the destination will be and the packets or the frames will be transferred to the destination 
and with the help of the IP address, the MAC address will be provided. All right. So this is it. So here is another layer remaining, and that is the physical layer. All right. So we are not going to discuss the physical layer in this hundred hundred days challenge because uh, there are a lot of details required for it, and mostly the physical layer will interact with the devices that there is no need to discuss about it. All right. So let's uh, end this, and uh, after that, let's move to another slide. What we have learned today. VLCM uh, or variable length subnet mask, reserved addresses, packets, IPv6, middle boxes, firewall, data link layer, and R. Alright, that's it. So I hope you like this video. If you like this video, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, then ask those questions in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer all of them. So till then, goodbye.